First and foremost, I take this opportunity to thank the Almighty God for his providence and grace throughout my career in the Kenya Defense Forces. Secondly, with great humility, I thank His Excellency, the President and the Commander-in-Chief for the trust and confidence in appointing me to serve as the Chief of the Defense Forces. I joined the Kenya Defense Forces 39 years ago last week, and I believe that every experience, lesson that I've gone through has contributed to this day. It's a great honor and a high sense of trust to be accorded the opportunity to serve our country, Kenya, at the helm of one of Kenya's most important institutions, that is the Kenya Defense Forces. And for that reason, I am indeed grateful to you all, officers and service members of KDF, whom I have worked with in the course of this journey. As I take over this great responsibility, I am committed to leading our brave men and women in uniform to achieve our nation's defense objectives. Our gallant soldiers, airmen, and sailors are the backbone of our nation's defense. I feel honored to have been chosen to lead such a distinguished team. I am acutely aware of the evolving national and global security challenges which we face in this volatile, uncertain, complex, and dynamic security environment. It has also not escaped me that times have changed and so are the security threats we face. I am well aware that strategies which were used yesterday may not be applicable today, and neither will strategies of today be applicable tomorrow. However, I am confident that with the dedication and commitment of our men and women in uniform, we will collectively be able to develop strategies which will enable us overcome these challenges and ensure the safety, security, stability of our nation and its people for sustainable economic development and prosperity. I am confident that through His Excellency's strategic guidance and wise counsel, the Kenya Defense Forces leadership team that I will lead will succeed in delivering defense and security to the Kenyan people, working closely with other security agencies within a broader multi-agency framework. I believe it will be in the continuing to capitalize on this multi-agency concept that synergy will be created to enable us deliver on our security mandate. I wish to thank my predecessor, General Kibochi, for his mentorship, guidance, and cooperation, without which I would not have reached this position. I thank my family for the support they have accorded me in every step of my life in the military. Finally, I wish to humbly request for the support of all the officers and service members in KDF, that we all pull together in the same direction in order to achieve our mission. I strongly believe that every contribution from everyone is necessary and important in creating the synergy for the success of our mission. It is for that reason that I will make and insist on the clarion call of one force, one mission. We shall be one force, knit together, 
with one purpose of providing defense and remaining true to our motto of Ulinzi Daima. Once again, I thank His Excellency the President and the Commander-in-Chief for according me this high responsibility to lead our Kenya Defense Forces as a premier, professional, and effective force. I will do my best, God being my helper. I thank you. God bless KDF and God bless Kenya. Now for the record, I wish to read the testimonial of General Kiboshi. General Robert Karioki Kibochi joined the Kenya Defense Forces on 18th May 1979 as an officer cadet and underwent military and leadership training culminating to the granting of presidential commission as a second lieutenant on 31st March 1980. The general has served the Kenya Defense Forces for 44 years and 89 days with loyalty, dedication, diligence, and competence which earned him promotions through the commissioned ranks to become a Forster General. He undertook several professional military courses and studied both locally and abroad, posting exemplary performance. These training courses include the National Defense College in Kenya, Telecommunication Engineering in the United Kingdom, Signal Officers Course Degree in Engineering in India, Command and Staff Training in the United Kingdom. Additionally, General Kiboshi pursued higher education and ultimately along the continuum and a doctorate degree in peace and conflict studies. Allow me to add that he is the first CDF to earn a PhD in this line of studies. Congratulations, sir. He held various senior appointments in leadership, command, staff, and management, including those of the Vice Chief of Defense, Commander Kenya Army, Assistant Chief of Defense Forces, in charge of strategic plans policy, Director of International Peace Support Center, Chief of Staff at the Eastern African Standby Force, Commander Army Corps of Signal, and ultimately Chief of Defense Forces serving from 11th May 2020 to today. During his tenure, General provided inspiring and focused leadership that saw significant transformation of the force, including major investments in training, operational and logistic capabilities, healthcare systems, in addition to supporting national development and the enhancement of Kenya's contribution towards regional and international peace and security. In appreciation of his vast accomplishment, he was decorated with diverse medals, key among them the holder of the Order of the Golden Heart, EGH, and the Chief of the Order of the Burning Spear, CBS. General Kibochi, Kibochi retires from the service after attaining the mandatory age commensurate to his rank as a general officer. Now, the last act that I will do before I invite him to speak is to hand him what we call the veteran's card. This is the card which he will use to access Defense Forces Hospital, Defense Forces uh, shops. Without it, five years from now, the guards will be asking him, Museo Metoka Wapi.
Thank you very much indeed, uh, General Francis Ogola, uh, for those very kind words. The Cabinet Secretary, uh, Minister of Defense, Honorable Aden Duale, uh, former Chiefs of Defense Forces, uh, the former uh, CS uh, Defense, I must recognize Ambassador Rachel Mamo, who is here with us. She served with us for a long time, and thank you very much indeed, Madam, for coming. The Principal Secretary, uh, Minister of Defense, uh, Mr. Patrick Mariro, the former PSs uh, who are here, uh, let me recognize uh, PS Mohammed Ibrahim, uh, who is here, Mr. Kaberia, I believe, uh, and Mr. Saitoti. The Chief of Defense Forces, uh, General Gola, the Vice Chief, Lieutenant General John Amwangi, uh, Service Commanders, retired General Officers, and they, may I request that the retired General Officers who are sitting on this side please stand for a, an applause. Thank you very much indeed for coming. The members of Defense Foreign Relations, uh, led by uh, Honorable uh, Koech, distinguished guests, senior officers, both uniformed and non-uniformed, officers, MWAC chairperson and members of MWAC, Defense Forces Sergeant Major, Askari Wenzangu Hamjambo. Hamjambo. KDF, KDF, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here this afternoon. Your presence makes this historic day even more special. The CDF has intimated and read my testimonial, and I would like to thank him and all who have sent messages of best wishes during this transition period uh, after, as I proceed uh, for my retirement. I thank you all uh, for your kind words and the honor you bestow upon my family and I as we disengage from the Kenya Defense Forces after 88 days. I would like to uh, say that serving for 44 years and ascending to, the, to become the 10th Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces is a huge favor and blessings uh, from the Almighty God uh, to any officer. I consider myself therefore very blessed and favored to have had the opportunity to lead such a gallant professional institution in different capacities and now as I leave as the CDF. I would like to take this moment to express my profound gratitude to all those who made my military life remarkable. I'm grateful in particular to both my commanders in chief, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, and his predecessor, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, who have shown tremendous trust and confidence in my leadership of the KDF, without which I could not have accomplished the aspirations that I set out to undertake in my strategic vision on assumption of CDF's position three years ago. 
I thank them for their consideration towards the military, their unwavering commitment to share timely strategic guidance, and for their unparalleled support uh, to me during my tenure as CDF, and by extension uh, to all KDF's officers and service members. I thank the incoming CDF, or rather the CDF currently, General Francis Ogola, and the three service commanders uh, seated here, uh, starting with Major General Jimson Mutai, the commander of the Navy. Thank you. Major General John Ogola, uh, J John Amenda, uh, the commander of the Air Force, and Lieutenant General Peter Njiro, the commander of the Navy, uh, of the Army. As part of my strategic team, uh, this team ensured that the KDF remained mission ready in responding to diverse operational and administrative engagements. We have collectively, over the past three years, achieved our military objective of defending Kenya's territorial integrity and sovereignty. I also thank my key staff at the Defense Headquarters starting with the Assistant Chief of Defense Forces in charge of operations, doctrine, and training, Major General Leuria. Thank you very much. I also thank the Director of Military Intelligence, uh, Major General Farah. Thank you very much, Major. I also like to thank the Assistant Chief of Defense Forces in charge of personnel logistics, Major General Afazad Kyugu. Thank you. And lastly, but not least, the Director of Medical Services, uh, Major General Dr. Nganga. Thank you very much. All of you, in your respective branches, you provided me with proper advice to be able to lead this honorable institution. I would also like to thank your respective branch heads for their participation in conceptualizing and implementing our ideas that ensured we remain ahead of the curve in a complex and rapidly mutating security environment. To all formation commanders who are here, I recognize and appreciate your contribution, your commitment and dedication to serve in operations and other administrative tasks, enabling the accomplishment of our diverse missions. To all of you, KDF soldiers, you have demonstrated immense adaptability in performance of various operational tasks and those related to national development. Your delivery of KDF mandate has been exemplary across the diverse operational theaters, one within our borders, along the Kenya-Somalia border, in Somalia, and in Eastern DRC. You continue to optimize professionalism and mission readiness, and I thank you. Without a doubt, you are the arrowhead. My gratitude will be lacking if I do not re reflect on the support accorded to me by my dear wife, Tabitha our children and grandchildren who are here with us. May I request that you stand, please. Asante Nisana. My dear Tabitha, has been the bedrock of our family, and I can never thank her enough for doing most of the heavy lifting uh, for our family while I was consumed by exigencies of military work. I also want to thank Tabitha for her courage to initiate and establish programs to improve the welfare of military families. I applaud you and all other pioneers of the Military Wives Association of Kenya for your vision. You have mobilized and implemented a family-centric welfare model 
for the Kenya Defense Forces, wives and families. Ladies and gentlemen, when I joined the military on 18 May 1979 as a cadet officer at the age of 20, I was elated. I recognized that my luck and favor from the date of my enlistment has lingered on, designing a path that led me to this day. When I exit at the apex of the military leadership, it has been a wonderful journey. It has been a great adventure, and I have led and been led. I have learned and unlearned. I have appreciated the power of observation, speech, silence, diversity of persons, and perspectives. Above all, I have enjoyed the rare opportunity of experiencing the conundrum that is military leadership, and in the end, I have found all my experiences meaningful and of consequence. Beyond the celebrations and expression of gratitude, this is also an occasion on reflection. When I became CDF, I was beholden to seven objectives, which today characterize my tenor. I was persuaded that we needed to advance our training to achieve optimal mission readiness status. We needed to identify and bridge military engineering capabilities. We needed to attain modernization and assistance in equipment repair and refits. We needed to enhance our cyber and information systems capabilities. We needed to revamp military healthcare system. We need to improve, we need to improve personnel housing. And lastly, we needed to strengthen military industrial innovation capacity. These were my big, my, my big ideas informed by the realities of our defense posture, which demands periodic review in order to meet our constitutional mandate and to deliver defense and security to the Kenyan people. In our collective scorecard, my team and I have done our best and the last three years with me as a leader have made an indelible mark in the history of our defense forces. We delivered whenever we were called upon and built high standards of professionalism and discipline, sustaining KDF as one of the most efficient, modern, and patriotic military force in the world. The military today is operating in a dynamic environment, regionally and internationally. And KDF remains a key player in contributing to global and regional peace and stability through various assignments with the United Nations, the African Union, and the Eastern African community. In this regard, our gallant soldiers have registered significant successes in grading the terrorist group, Al Shabaab, and continue to restore peace and stability in Somalia under the umbrella of the African Transition Mission in Somalia. As well, as well as capacitating the Somali security forces to enable them to take up responsibility of ensuring stability of their nation as the African mission exits Somalia by December 2024. Our troops are also deployed in the Eastern DRC to stabilize that region under the Eastern Africa Community Regional Force. And I'm glad uh, today the former force commander of the Eastern African Regional Force, Major General Jeff Nyaga, is with us today. Thank you very much for your service. Moreover, in the international sector, KDA continues to collaborate and engage with varied international partners, consolidating and strengthening relations in matters of training, exercises, and operations, which continue to contribute to the sharpening of the arrowhead for mission readiness. Ladies and gentlemen, back at home, our troops have been involved in various multi-agency operations and training exercises which have enhanced and ensured a collective and synergized approach in addressing national security challenges. Guided by the Constitution, the success of Operation Amani Boni in Labu, and Operation Rejesha Utulivu in Laikipia, and Operation Maliza Uhalifu in the North Rift, 
among others, is a clear demonstration of the value for multi-agency cooperation. As well, KDF's disaster response capability has been at the forefront in the overall crisis preparedness and response in the country. Further, in addressing capability gaps in education and training of personnel, KDF has continued to invest in education and training institutions aimed at developing strategic thinking, operational, as well as te tactical and technical capacities across all domains. The establishment of the National Defense University Aviation Center of Excellence and Counterinsurgency Terrorism and Stability Operation Training Center and the Cyber Warfare Training Center will get greatly contribute uh, to KTF, KDF's ability to respond to varying threat environments. Wider engagements have also seen KDF deploy its skilled manpower and capabilities to, to assist national institutions as part of KDF's mandate. Successes realized in this area include the turnaround of the Kenya Meat Commission, the construction and establishment of the Kenya Shipyards Limited, revamping of the Kenya Railways, construction of Uhuru Gardens, uh, national monuments and museum, and the rehabilitation of Uhuru Park and City Park, among others. On health care matters, KDF continues to revamp its health care system to ensure a healthy fighting force, since we believe very strongly that a healthy force contributes to a secure nation. These efforts have happened across the country, from Isiolo to Garissa, from Manda to Mariakani, from Nakuru to Eldoret, and from Nairobi to Mombasa. This Ulinzi sports complex, coupled with the nearby Defense Forces Wellness Center, are contributing immensely to the wellness and healing of our troops and our families, thereby complementing our health care system. Consistent with my soldier-centric approach to welfare service, we developed a robust soldier-centric welfare framework aligned to meeting emerging challenges facing our officers and service members, which has involved a pursuit for the provision of decent housing to all personnel. Further, following enactment of the Veterans Act, the Defense Headquarter, we have now established a Veterans Affairs Directorate to manage the welfare uh, veterans affairs to which I'm now the newest member. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> finally, I would like to thank the people of Kenya for showing confidence and trust in the KDF and their continued support in our de deployments. In all these engagements that we, we undertake, we have endeavored to keep the Kenyan people well informed of our activities through KDF's strategic communication led, by, led, by, and led and manned by a highly competent team of information operators. Time has come for me to spend the rest of my life with my family, enjoying my sunset years. I've cherished, cherished my time in the KDF, and as I hang my military boots today, I urge that KDF remains focused on the mandate, guided by the key tenets of being apolitical, subordination to civilian authority, and being professional at all times. From the deepest of my heart, I thank you all who have attended my change of command ceremony and for the courtesy you have shown me by coming and for the splendid gifts presented to me by the Ministry of Defense, uh, to me and my wife, to, by the Ministry of Defense and KDF staff, which I will always treasure. To the KDF family, it's a great to have lived and worked with you all. I urge that you extend the same support to General Francis Ogola, the CDF as he leads KDF uh, to greater heights. Asante ni sana na mungu wa bariki. It is now my duty and pleasure to welcome the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, Honorable Adan Dwale, 
to make his speech. Honorable CS. Yes. Outgoing Chief of Defense Forces, General Robert Kibochi, CDF, General Francis Sogola, PS Patrick Mariro, Vice CDF, Lieutenant General Joanna Mwangi, respected retired CDFs and general officers, my sister and one of the longest serving Minister for Defense, Honorable Rachel Mamo, the Chair and members of the Defense and Intelligence Committee of the National Assembly, service commanders, general officers, senior officers, senior civilians officers, service members, family members, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by welcoming all of you to join me in bidding farewell to an outstanding and distinguished general on this special day. From the onset, outgoing CDF, I would like to say thank you for the years of service to this great nation. You have faithfully dedicated 44 years of your life diligently serving the people of Kenya, a look into your illustrious career shows that Kenya heavily invested in you by providing training opportunities from when you were a young officer through to middle level training to executive and strategic levels of education. And General, you did not disappoint you have given back in equal measure. During your tenure, you took the path of providing transformative leadership. This required critical and creative thinking, bold initiatives, strategic focus, and ability to convince those below you and above you. The Kenya Defense Forces has experienced tremendous progress under your watch, both in operation and the social welfare support programs. Just to name a few, today KDF has modern medical and health facilities, which are setting high standards in terms of infrastructure and services in different regions of our country. KDF has also set up the wellness center to address the emotional psychological and social well-being of its members and families. As we are all aware, mental health is a big concern in our country and it equally affects KDF personnel, especially due to the demanding nature of the military duties. KDF has transformed AFCO into DEFCO, a modern shopping facility serving households needs to the soldiers family today we have the veterans act which has allowed not just the much needed recognition of those retired military personnel who dedicated their lives serving our country but also ensure certain critical services are available to them in the last few years our region and indeed the world has continued to experience a myriad of complex security challenges due to the interconnected nature in contemporary times some of these challenges either directly or indirectly affect us or even affect our national interests and our national security such situations call for multilateral approach in seeking solutions General Kibochi, under your watch, KDF has emerged as a leader of various efforts and initiatives aimed at realizing peace in our region. Our contribution as part of ATMIS 
and Somalia Frontline State Initiative remain central in defeating terrorism in Somalia. Our involvement and leadership in DRC as part of ICRAF is an important enabler in creating conditions for peace through political means. In Ethiopia peace process, KDF is providing leadership for the AU monitoring, verification and compliance mission, an important step towards securing lasting peace for the people of northern Ethiopia and the achievement of full implementation of the cessation of hostilities agreement. Further, KDF has representations in many other peacekeeping efforts, including staff appointments at the UN headquarters in New York. As the saying goes, crisis, crisis situations require high-level leadership. General, you have provided that high-level leadership during a time of volatility, a time of uncertainty, a time of complexity and sometimes ambiguity in our region. And for that, I would like to say thank you very much. While KDF has a big impact in undertaking its primary mandate, a lot has been done under the ambit of its secondary role, which is to assist and cooperate with other authorities in the situation of emergency or disaster and to restore peace in any part of Kenya affected by unrest or instability as assigned. Through the multi-agency cooperation and the whole of government effort, KDF under your watch has undertaken many humanitarian civil assistance projects which include building of boreholes, building of dams, building of hospitals, distribution of examination papers during the national examination, and currently the non-competent evacuation operations for Kenyans who are affected in Sudan. These are clear indications that your leadership was firmly focused on achieving the mandate stipulated in our constitution. Behind the success realized by our forces, there was indeed a stalwart leadership which you provided at the helm. I can therefore confidently say that as the 10th CDF of the Republic of Kenya, you have without any doubt set up a firm foundation for KDF to continue with an upward trajectory, the strong institutions that have been built, the military doctrine and the capabilities developed will continue to ensure KDF remains a highly professional and reliable force regionally and globally. We all have many goals and it's possible that you are retiring without accomplishing some of them. But given the complexity and the predictability of the world we live, every day presents a new challenge. So you can therefore pass the torch knowing you have made positive changes which indirectly impact the operational effectiveness of our forces and their welfare going to the future. Your service has been in a special place in our, in our institution, which is rich in history and tradition. Future generations will hear about you. They will study your philosophies and they will learn from what you have done while in service. Let me also thank your wonderful family in a special way for the support and the sacrifice they have endured. It's through such support that enabled you to do what you did on a daily basis. To the family, you have contributed immensely towards the general's achievement, and we want to thank you. Lastly, I want to wish you a happy retirement. I would also want to thank and reiterate what the President and the Commander-in-Chief said, 
that you should always continue to contribute towards the nation building, even in your retirement. I also want to thank General Francis Ogola, a man I have worked very closely. In the last few years, I was at the Ministry of Defense. I have no doubt, not only myself, but the entire family of KDF and the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces and the President of the Republic, that General Francis Ogola has what it takes, has the competency, has the training, and has the leadership skills to take Kenya Defense Forces and the Ministry of Defense to a higher achievement and a better place in our region and in, uh, in the globe. I want to thank the former retired CDFs and the entire leadership of Kenya Defense Forces that you have a place in the Republic of Kenya. You are respected. You have made our forces to be respected regionally and globally. And I am sure those who have remained in various positions will make the people of Kenya, will make the region to be proud of Kenya Defense Forces. Asante Sana, and once again I say thank you, General Kibochi, for your service. God bless you all. Kwa heshma na omba sote tusimame kwa wimbo wa taifa. Let's be all upstanding kindly for the national anthem. Waziri wetu wa ulinzi niombe kwa heshima unapoondoka pamoja na CDFs katibu wetu mkuu wa ulinzi niweze kusoma itifaki jinsi tutakavyo ondoka mahali hapa na niombe wengine tafadhali kwa heshima tuweze kuketi waziri wetu wa ulinzi anapoondoka pamoja na CDF service commanders ili niweze kupeana exit protocol kutoka mahali hapa kuelekea defense headquarters kwa wale ambao wameweza kualikwa basi basi la kwanza ambalo limeweza kutengwa ni basi la serving generals basi la serving generals